Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I'm doing a very exciting tag video that I have seen all over the place and I'm not really sure who started it, if I'm honest, but I will of course give credit where credit is due down in my description box. This is the, if I had to declutter, one palette from every brand I own tag. So I've seen everybody do this but I haven't watched any yet because I didn't want anybody to creep into my brain cells and, and give me ideas on what palettes I should be decluttering if I was to declutter one. But I have to be honest with you, this stack of palettes, I, I just, I want to keep them, all of them. So let's not get twisted here. I am not getting rid of any of these, but if I had to, these would be the ones that I would choose to get rid of out of every brand in my collection. I have a giant stack. I have a giant collection. So when I went into this, this tag video, I went into it with the mindset of this brand had to be a brand that I had at least three palettes from and at least three that I have used. So I do have several brands in my collection that I do, I think uh, through the lens of like Perfusion and like Lime Crime, I do have three palettes from those brands, but I have not used all three palettes. I didn't want it to be a 50-50 this one or that one. I wanted it to be at least three palettes that I have from each one of these brands. So, and at least three that I have used from each one of these brands. So that is where I'm going with this. And if you are looking to jump into that tag with me, please stick around. For those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I am a lover of all things high-end, colorful beauty and self-care. I also work in the beauty industry as a district leader for Ulta Beauty, so I get a lot of education in my job. I like to bring that education to you. So you're gonna see a lot of reviews here on this channel. You're also gonna see hauls and project pans and just general makeup chit chat because I love to talk about makeup. And if you're here, you also like to talk about makeup. So I hope that you're in for it and I hope that you like me enough that you'll wanna subscribe before you go. And with that said, let's jump into this. I'm so excited to walk through this with you guys. So I wrote down every brand in my collection that I had at least three palettes from and brands that I have used at least three palettes from in my collection. And I think I've got, I as I was going through pulling the palettes out, I realized that I had forgotten one. So I am gonna start with that one actually so that I don't forget it because it's not on my list. So the first brand is Viseart. In Viseart I have four palettes. Two of them are the little, the little one, the little eight pan ones, and two of them are the larger 12 pan ones. And the one I would get rid of in Viseart is this one here, and it is the Sultry Muse. Like, I like this palette, if I'm honest, but when it comes to Viseart, like, their shimmers are not my favorite thing about the brand, or at least their older shimmers. I don't know, their, you know, formula might have changed, but this is an all shimmer palette. That's another reason why I would get rid of it because it's all shimmer. I don't hardly ever dip into it. It looks like, I, I'm sure that you can see some divots in the shadows, but it's also very, very pastel, very, very light in tone. There's only a couple shadows in here that are not light in tone. So that's just not my bag. I mean, that's not my, my journey. That's not where I go to for like makeup joy. So this would be the one palette from Viseart that I would get rid of. The next brand on my list is Too Faced. And for Too Faced, I only have four palettes from Too Faced, if you can believe that. But this one would be the one that I would declutter if I had to declutter one in it is the Razzle Dazzle Berry Eyeshadow Palette. And you know, it smells so good. It smells like jam or berries. It smells like raspberry. It's a super cute palette and there's really ultimately nothing wrong with this palette. The reason why it would be this one and not any of the other ones is because the other palettes that I have from Too Faced are the peach palette, which I love dearly. Um, like from an emotional place, I couldn't get rid of that palette. That was the first actual like whole bundle that I ever purchased. Um, also, I have the chocolate gold palette. That one's pretty phenomenal. I also have the gingerbread spice palette, which isn't fantastic, honestly, but I think that when I think of those three palettes, I'm like every color I ever need from Too Faces in those palettes, I don't need this one. Also, this one just wasn't my favorite to work with, if I'm honest. The colors just don't 
tell a story in a way I need them to for me. So this one would be the one from Too Faced that I got rid of. Natasha Denona. So I have 23 palettes to choose from from Natasha Denona. And this is the one that I chose because I think that this color story I can get from any of the other 22 palettes that I have from Natasha Denona. But also I just didn't love I didn't love the eye looks that came out of this palette for myself. And y'all might be surprised because I, I feel like y'all think that I would choose the Circle Loco, but actually it's the Zendo. So I feel like any of these shadows are available in any of the other Natasha Denona palettes that I have in my collection and then some. Like when I look at this corner here, like I think this eye look that I have on right now could have come from this corner here and it didn't, but it did come from the Natasha Purple Blue. So I think this one would be the one for me. Like this isn't, uh, when I think through the lens of the ones that I like the least from Natasha Denona, I think that this falls into that realm as well. There's really nothing wrong with this palette. Ultimately, I just don't, I just don't like it. I just don't like it as good as I like the other ones. So Zendo is the one for me. Okay, so next is going to be Melt. And for Melt, I have the stacks. I don't know. Maybe this is cheating. But the other four palettes that I have from Melt, I would want to keep in my collection. I couldn't part with them. So this is considered a palette in my collection when I think through the lens of palettes. And I just couldn't... I. I would not care if this was in my collection at all. I do have two of the stacks. I have the, the gunmetal stack and I also have the love story stack. And I think there's maybe two shades in all eight of these shadows that I would want to keep. So this would be the melt palette that I got rid of. Uh, Juvia's Place was next on my list. And for the Juvia's Place palette that I would declutter it would be the Afreek. So Afreek is not a bad palette. It's really not. I just don't really love it. It's not a color story that I need to have in my collection. I honestly think that it is kind of a jumbled mess of a color story and I didn't love the looks that came out of this palette. This isn't a standalone palette for me in my collection, which many aren't, but this would be the one that I would get rid of from Juvia's Place if I had to get rid of a palette from Juvia's Place. And you guys, all of these palettes that I'm talking to you about, I believe, have a palette roulette on them. So I will link my palette roulette series down in the description box as well so that you guys can search them out if you wanted to. The next one I have is Lunar Beauty and this one pained my heart a little bit, but the palette that I would get rid of from Lunar Beauty is the Greek Goddess. This is such a beautiful palette. The packaging alone on it is just stunning, but I think really when it comes down to it, that is all that is stunning about this palette. I just don't love it. I just don't love the color story of it. There's a couple call out shades like this mustard yellow is a really great mustard yellow. I really love this orange and I really love this shadow here. But other than that, like this, I could take or leave this palette. It is not a palette in my collection that I see standing the test of time, honestly, if it weren't the fact that it is from Lunar Beauty. I love Lunar Beauty. I love Manny. So I, I will hold on to it, obviously. But that would be the palette that I would declutter from Lunar Beauty. The next one I have is from ABH. And ABH, I actually kind of shocked myself because this at one point in time was one of my very favorite palettes. But I have nine palettes from ABH that are the the regular like 14 pan ABH eyeshadow palettes and the one I would declutter is the prism palette. This one is just again a hot mess of a color story. When I think about pulling for this palette I think man that's a jumbled mess of an eye look like what am I going to do with the shadows in this? This or this yellow is crazy stupid. Um, This white is also like not amazing it got hard pan right away on it so I have to dig at that there is a couple of shadows in here that I think are great shadows but I also when I think through the nine other palettes that I have from ABH I think that most of these or at least something like them is in any one of those other nine eyeshadow palettes let's move to Norvina so for no Norvina which is also like some might say ABH, but I like categorize them and have them in two different sections in my makeup collection. For Novena, 
I have the mini pro pigment volume three and the biggest reason why again is color story like when I think about pulling this palette I think that these are beautiful shades and I think that you can make this palette work on its own but truly it is not a standalone eyeshadow palette I can make most palettes a standalone eyeshadow palette this one was rough for me it has also some really standout shades these three shimmers across the top are beautiful but when I think through the lens of mattes in this palette these six are mattes and they just don't work together very well. All the reds and pinks in here kind of look like the same color when you get them on an eye look. So then you're stuck with green or blue to pair with them and I just don't I just don't think it it's just not cohesive. It's just not. So that would be the one that I would declutter from ABH Norvina and then I have Violet Voss. So for Violet Voss, I love Violet Voss. I think her eyeshadows are fantastic, but when I think about the palettes that give me grief, the ones that I don't really think about when I think about Violet Voss and the love that I have for Violet Voss, it's this one, the Fruit Sorbet. This one did come to me through Ipsy. It's one of her fun size palettes, but it's still 10 pans of eyeshadow. So you're still getting a full size, well, a full amount of eyeshadows in a palette from these little palettes. So I just, again, color story for me it's the color story I love big bright colors but this one was just not amazing I think again we have like four mattes here they really kind of look the same on an eye look this one does deepen it up a little bit but then you have this is a shimmer this is a shimmer the black is a shimmer that's awful the blue is a shimmer and then you have this like setting shade or setting for people that have that skin tone shade it's just not an amazing palette I love her bigger ones and I do have several of these fun size this one is just my least favorite of them all for Huda I have this one and maybe you guys could have guessed this this is one of the first palettes that I reviewed this year and it's the purple haze palette I did not have a great time with this palette I think that it stems from the fact that most of it is shimmer and what isn't shimmer in here is not really great. They're not super pigmented. They're, you know, Huda's formula is very inconsistent at best. And I typically love these obsession palettes, but this one was just not one that I loved. I didn't have a great time with this palette. It was super chalky but it also the glitters were just like glitter bombs all over your face so I didn't love this palette this one would be the one that I would declutter from Huda Beauty and then Dominique Cosmetics you guys could probably guess this one it is this guy here Rustic Glam who guessed that I hate this palette I don't even know why it still exists in my collection actually I think I probably do it is for this green here which is a fantastic green and this purple here which is also a fantastic purple but other than that this is the ugliest palette I have in my collection by far I just didn't like it I also really don't like the Dominique Cosmetics like formula I don't know there's something about it that I just I just don't get along with so this one would go um, as a matter of fact it might be one that ends up in a declutter sometime very soon I'm sure the next one I have is Pat McGrath and again maybe this is cheating I don't know but I picked a mini because my full-size Pat McGrath there's no way I'm getting rid of those but when I think of a Pat McGrath palette that I could get rid of it would be this one this is the X I ecstasy subversive eyeshadow palette this was one of her minis this was like 25 bucks I just don't I think that of the palettes that I have of Pat McGrath these shimmers are not shimmers that really call to me like I love her nude tone shimmers and I do have the other mini that did have like the browns and the nudes in her like metallic formula I just don't use this I never pull for this ever so that would go the next one I have is BH Cosmetics completely different price point on the spectrum of price points and for BH Cosmetics I did pull the Take Me Back to Brazil palette uh, the biggest reason why is because of just the neons in here I I think that this is a color story that could be quite nice but only if you are doing Instagram eye looks every single day which I'm not 
these pants are also so so tiny and I have these colors probably over and over again in my collection at this point. This also wasn't like it's not the BH formula that I know and love. Honestly, I had a really rough time with this palette, so I would probably get rid of that one. The next one I have is Ace Beauté, and for Ace Beauté, I actually have the Classical Paradise palette. Classical Par Paradise reminded me a lot of subculture in a way, just with its like grungy nature, and I did have a good time with this. But of the Ace Beauté palettes that I have used, this one was my least favorite. Again, nothing wrong with this palette. I do like this palette and it is a palette that I foresee staying in my collection for a while. But if I had to get rid of one, this one would be it. For Morphe, this was a no brainer for me. It had to be one of the Jaclyn Hill Vault palettes and it had to be this one, Dark Magic. Who can raise their hand and tell me that this is the same one that they would get rid of if you had an extensive Morphe collection and this existed in it? This is a horrible, horrible palette. So Morphe doesn't have anything that I need. It really doesn't. And I've said that over and over again this year. Think back to when the Jaclyn Hill Vault came out. This is eons old. But I don't think that this is even true to Morphe. Honestly, the formula in here is atrocious, worse than regular Morphe formula. This palette never gets pulled. It will never be used again. It probably should be decluttered, but I keep it through the lens of keeping the vault together. Why I even need any one of those palettes, I will never know, but that's where we're at right now. The one that I pulled for Tarte to get rid of, because I only think I have four Tarte palettes and this is one of them. This is the least used of them. And the biggest reason why is because their shimmers are not my favorite from the Tarte formula. I really love their mattes and this only has one matte. This is the Make Believe in Yourself palette. This is what it looks like. It is a beautiful palette, stunning palette. I think it's the first Tarte palette I purchased. It's all shimmers, except for this one shade right here, which is a matte. The matte formula from Tarte is the one that I, I love, 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 not the shimmer formula. So if I had to get rid of one, it would be this one. Colored Rain, I only have four palettes from, I believe, maybe five. And this would be the one that I got rid of. If you guys don't go back and watch any of these palette reviews through my palette roulette series, this one was the most disappointing. I, I think though too, like when I think of it through the lens of colors that I love, these this is not a color story that I love, but this is. So I really anticipated I was going to be able to do something with this palette and I just couldn't. Yeah, it would, it would go. Very dry shadow very chalky shadow, didn't last long on my eye at all, didn't blend out very well at all. It was just an awful, awful shadow palette. Um, the next one I have on here is ColourPop and I only have five ColourPop eyeshadows. This one would be the one that I got rid of. Now, there are some standouts in this palette. I have to be honest, this, this bone shade here is phenomenal. This shadow here, I really, really love. This shadow here, I really, really love. And this green, I really, really love. But the other shadow palettes that I have from ColourPop in my collection, I like far more than I like this palette. So this one would be the one to go. Not really necessarily anything wrong with this palette, but the color story is very light. And that is just not, that's not a color story I love. So I would get rid of that one. The next one is e.l.f. For e.l.f. I would get rid of the Truffles Bite Size eyeshadow palette. These, I only have four Bite Size palettes. These came from my friend JC. She bought them for me for um, Subscriber Buys My Makeup, all drugstore. Um, she bought four different Bite Size palettes. This one is the least used. I think that it doesn't even look like I've touched it. Um, it's the least used. It's not my favorite as far as color stories go. And I would get rid of this one. I have Glam Light the Donut palette. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this palette except for that it is clunky and stupid to have to put into a collection. This is like um, squishy and then the color story of it is not a bad color story. It's just not also an awesome color story. If you want a one and done eyeshadow palette, there's not a whole lot that you can do with this color story. I mean, it's beautiful, vibrant like purples and blues, but then we have this like quasi like brown red like what the hell is this? Um, it is just not, it's just not fun. It's not a fun palette to work with. It's a great palette. Don't get me wrong. The formula of it is fine. I like, you know, Glam Light color, uh, Glam Light formula for sure. I just 
don't like this palette. I have like more palettes from them that I definitely could pull those colors from. And uh, the last one is Urban Decay. For Urban Decay, I would declutter this guy. This is the full spectrum palette and this is what it looks like. It's another rainbow palette. And it actually surprises me how many rainbow palettes is in this, but I don't like Urban Decay's eyeshadow formula typically. They're just, it's just not the Naked formula, I should say. This reminds me very much of the Naked formula. It's just not, it, it's just not amazing. It's not impactful. It's not pretty. It doesn't last very long. It takes a lot of work to build up. It takes a lot of work to blend out because it just doesn't stick around on an eyelid. I just don't like this. This was with my Urban Decay Electric palette. I also purchased this one and this has seen next to no use because it's just not, it's just not fantastic. I keep it around because the packaging is beautiful. It's an old palette. You can't get it anymore. And this one is next to untouched. <laughs> so there's that. So that is my, if I had to declutter one palette from every brand, those are the palettes that I would choose. I, like I said, do have palette roulettes on every single one of these uh, palettes. So I will stick my uh, playlist down in my description box for you. Please do go watch those videos on these palettes to see my true um, review of each one of these palettes. I encourage you to do so. I think the only ones that I don't have, I don't have a palette roulette on the bite size palettes, but I think I have a palette roulette on everything else that's here. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I do hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that you enjoyed it enough that you're considering giving it a big thumbs up. It really does help our channels out here. Um, I also really hope that, like I said in the beginning, this channel soothes your soul as much as it soothes mine and that you chose to subscribe to my channel before taking off out of here today. And if not, um, that makes me very sad. I get it. <laughs> I got you. Um, I hope that 2022 is treating you all kindly. I hope that you and yours are well, that you're safe, that you're healthy, and that you're getting along as best you can in this crazy chaotic world that we're living in right now. I also hope that you're loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye friend.